Welcome to Swami's classroom. Today we'll talk about more circle in a structure if the object is subjected to plane stress that is here is normal stress and shear stress as shown in this diagram right here then we need to find what is the maximum stress and minimum stress or maximum shear stress maximum normal stress to figure out that Mohr circle is very good tool. It was discovered by the German engineer Otto Mohr. That's why the name Mohr circle. So let us look at the diagram right here. This is a plane st stress represented by this diagram. We have normal stress in the x direction sigma x, sigma y in the y direction, and we have the shear stress. Now, if it is rotated through an angle, th theta, what will be the stresses in the new axis? So transformation of the stresses from XY system to X1, Y1 system. That is the X1, Y1 is rotated through an angle theta. Then we have normal stress sigma X1, sigma Y1, and the shear stress tau X1, Y1. That is to explain what happens to the nature of the stress. Now suppose the rotation of the angle equal to the principal angle equal to theta p. Then it is very interesting to observe if you look at the new element, rotated element, you have the normal stress sigma 1, sigma 2, there is no shear stress. That means these stresses are called principal stress. Sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the maximum stress and minimum stresses and there is no shear stress. So that angle is called principal angle, theta p. Now let us see some of the sign convention used on this. For the normal stress, if it is a tension stress, we call positive. If it is a compression stress, we say it is negative. For the shear stress, it is a simple sign convention. You look at the top plane. If that shear is acting in the positive x direction, then you call that a positive shear. And if that stress on the top plane acting in the negative x direction, you call that shear negative shear stress. It's very important. You have for pure shear, you have, this is your equilibrium diagram. You just look at the top plane. If the shear is in the positive x, positive shear. If the shear is along the negative x, then it is negative. It's very important to notice that. With this sign convention, we can construct the Mohr circle. Now let us see the example right here. We have 200 megapascal in the x direction. 100 megapascal in the y direction, 50 megapascal is your shear stress. I just named A1, B1, A2, B2, just to distinguish each plane. So I'm writing all the stresses here. Now to draw the Mohr circle for this, you draw horizontal axis normal stress, vertical axis shear stress. Now you need a diameter to draw the circle. That means you take the plane A1, B1, the coordinates are A1, sigma y plus tau xy, B1 is sigma x minus tau xy. Right? The A1 is the top plane, nature of stress sigma y, and the tau. And the B1, 90 degree to that, on the Mohr circle it's always twice the angle, you know that. So when they say twice the angle, that will be 180. That's why A1 and B1 are 180 or along a straight line, which forms the diameter of the circle. And the center of the circle, given by sigma average, which is one half of sigma x plus sigma y. That is your average stress, equal to 150 in this case. So you locate the center, and you know the diameter coordinates of both ends of the diameter, A1 and B1. Now we can easily draw the circle. 
with the center TA1 as a radius, easy to construct a circle. Now wherever that intersects the horizontal axis, the maximum value is called sigma 1, the minimum value you call sigma 2. So those two values are the principal stresses and along this axis shear stress is zero. So that's why on the element we saw before there is no shear stress and the angle equal to 2 theta p. Some of the textbook they take the vertical axis down as shown here. Then there's a lot of confusion. To eliminate the confusion I'm giving you the coordinates a2 and B2 are the planes being represented on this diagram. But as a thumb rule, you just assume the A coordinate is sigma y minus tau xy, B coordinate is sigma x plus tau xy. Right? So this is the A coordinate is just the opposite of the one in the when you take the axis positive upwards. In this case it's positive downwards. So if you're doing by the thumb rule, just look at the coordinates. In the previous case, A1 is sigma y plus tau xy, B1 sigma x minus tau xy. In this case, A2 is sigma y minus tau xy, B2 is sigma x plus tau xy. So once you figure out those points, then it's e and you know the center of the circle, easy to construct the circle. The, what is the diameter represents? That represents the current position of the element. And if you rotate the element through an angle 2 theta p, then you will have the principal direction. Just sigma 1, sigma 2, no shear stress. That's what we saw in this diagram right here. And you can calculate the 2 theta p using this relation. And the tau max is this relation. And tau max, nothing but radius of the circle. If you add the average plus radius, you get sigma 1, the maximum principal stress. If you subtract the radius from sigma average, then you get the minimum value of the principal stress. So that completes the presentation. Happy learning.